fun. Hey, good morning, Ketchikan families. Uh, we're here today uh, because we want to talk about homeschooling in Ketchikan. And I'm Lori Ortez, and my role is the homeschool contact teacher and coordinator for the district's homeschool program, which is called Fast Track. But really, the ideas that we have here would apply for any family that's homeschooling with any program. Before we get started though, I wanted to tell you that we are primarily gonna talk about homeschooling where the parent is the lead and the direct teacher, but the district is also offering something you could look up called virtual school. They've adopted a program from Florida to the state of Alaska to Ketchikan where there will be certified teachers preparing um, classes for elementary school by grade level and high school by subject and so your child would tune in um, either live to the teacher or to the recording of the teacher uh, every day for their subject. And then you as a parent would be the guide and encourager for the rest of the work at home. Whereas homeschool, you're gonna be selecting the materials with the help of someone. Um, and then you are the direct teacher every day in, in charge of your schedule, et cetera. So today I have with me Charlie Young and she's been uh, homeschooling catch in for quite a long time and also some of you might know her because she had a montessori school in ketchikan for a while or for a lot of other reasons then on my left um i have amy help who's another homeschool uh, parent and uh, amy has also been homeschooling for a long time and also on the east coast right and um, the reason's a great combination is because Amy's kids are older than Charlie's, so they've experienced some different curriculum and different stages in learning. So um, what we have today are just some um, tips to get you started. So Charlie, would you like to say a few things? Sure. We have been homeschooling for quite a while and I have kids that are in the fourth grade and also in the first grade that I'll be homeschooling this year, as well as a seventh grader who will be at a public school this year. There are lots of things that you're going to find out that are wonderful about homeschooling. One thing that I wanna make sure that people know is that almost everyone I know that homeschools feels overwhelmed in the beginning. The idea of um, selecting a curriculum, figuring out your schedule, figuring out how it fits with the rhythm of your family can feel really overwhelming. And what I would encourage everybody to do is just know you're not alone in that feeling, to sit in that feeling, marinate in your curriculum, marinate with your schedule, and know that it will become clearer to you. So keep breathing. It's going to get easier as you continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, some practical things that I do for homeschooling is that I make sure in the AM hours, we touch on math, reading, and writing and I save history and science and art and any of those extra um, subjects that I wanna get in for the PM time. So I try to do science one or two times a week, history one or two times a week, art at least once a week, and then any sort of second language, whether it be music or, 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 a, or a foreign language of sorts. So my third tip that I would give to home, new homeschoolers and old homeschoolers is to reach out with questions to multiple people. People homeschool for so many different reasons. We all have different purposes that we're trying to achieve. And so you're going to get different answers to the same question. And you just have to keep asking until you find a suggestion that fits for your family. And there are a lot of really um, open and friendly homeschool families here that are willing to share their experience with you. Um, Can I interrupt for just one minute? Yes. So she talked about a lot of homeschool families and we know with the pandemic that homeschooling has exploded. So for example, uh, just in Fast Track alone, there's 26 first grade first graders and I think 10 second graders. So we're hoping uh, with our guidance and, and uh, maybe by public library announcements that people can find each other by grade levels or by group grade levels. So I just wanted to add that. There are plenty of peers, parent peers around to help you. Okay. Well, so looking a little bit ahead past this first month of September, coming September, we're going into these fall months where there are so many holiday seasons or holidays coming 
And I think that sometimes for homeschoolers, we feel like we have to, whatever we put down on our planner or whatever idea we have about what we are supposed to achieve, gets we get a little bit behind sometimes because we've got you know, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or any other holiday that we celebrate. Um, and we can feel a little bit like we're not doing the things that we should do. And I just wanna give everyone permission to stop and take extra time, create those holidays or cel family celebrations as moments of learning, and know that January and February are right around the corner where there are not a lot of holidays, and that tends to be where a lot of teachers, homeschooling or classroom teachers, get a lot done. So know that you're going to be okay, and if you have to push whatever you have on your schedule for this week onto next week, or get rid of it all together because maybe your kid wasn't interested, or maybe you feel like they've mastered it and you don't need to continue on it, it's okay, it's okay. And my last tip that I wanna share for all of you homeschool parents is all the kids get all, we all get excited about school supplies, and I think that it's really nice for you to think about getting some special school supplies for yourself mm -hmm. because it is a lot of work that you're asking yourself to do. And if it's a, a nice set of pencils or a nice planner that you wouldn't maybe have bought for yourself, otherwise, I am telling you to go ahead and do it because you <laughs> deserve it. <laughs> so those are my tips. <laughs> well, that's nice, Charlie. And they are the answers to lots of things that families ask me over and over again. And at the end, I have a couple of tips that are questions that people frequently ask. But for Amy, what are your thoughts? I think my biggest tip is at the beginning of the year, it's okay to start slow. We typically will say, okay, we're gonna start school this week and we're just gonna start with math. And every day we're gonna try to be successful at getting a math routine going. And next week we'll add another subject. Don't feel like you have to start with the whole box of curriculum on the first day. It's just, it's too much for everybody. Your mom, the mom, the dad, the kid, everybody. Um, so I think the second thing I would say is, remember life is gonna happen. Kids are gonna get sick, your might get sick, the washing machine might explode, the uh, dishwasher might leak all over your kitchen floor, and those days are, are gonna turn into days when you need to do other things. Get the kids involved in that. I don't know, take the dishwasher apart together and figure out what's wrong. You'll learn things and you might not do math that day or reading, but it's okay. It'll be there tomorrow or even in a couple days when you are ready to get back to it. So I think those, besides Charlie's things, those are like my biggest things. And be gracious to yourself. Like it's okay. Your kids are gonna turn out okay. You're gonna do a great job and just be gracious to yourself. Nice. So um, just my last comments are uh, sometimes I think that we move so fast or we plan our curriculum or this looks so exciting or we're planning at 11 o'clock at night that we forget to include our children in making those choices. They can go online and, and look at materials with you. You can spend some time talking about what their favorite topics are and go down that road with them because you can build reading and writing and math into any of those topics as well. Um, and then I, I agree with starting slow, of course, and I agree with uh, going with the flow. Um, but I think also built into that is children are creatures of habit and they do like routine. So you can do both of those things, but also uh, building a routine. I mean, the families that I've watched, including these um, that are really successful, they do have those routines. So um, there, there's the math and reading and writing every morning, that's a routine, and then your other subjects are in the afternoon, your Fridays are exploring, because I think kids live with those routines. So I ask families to decide what's the best time to start in the morning for you guys. When can you have breakfast and be showered and be in your learning center? 8.30, well then that's the time every morning that we try. Now, I don't live your life, but that would be my suggestion. And then if you have older kids, I would suggest that their learning center is not necessarily in their bedroom because they're probably gonna have a lot of online work and um, they still need that human interaction. You need to be involved with their, their learning and stuff. So if you can have a learning center that's more out and among the family, I think that's a good idea. Um, let's see if there was any other thing. Oh, uh, the last thing I really wanted to emphasize yeah. is you know, make sure you follow a child's lead and teach to their strengths. You have to deal with their challenges and the things that you're trying to bring up to speed, 
but really love and honor the things that they're that they are that are their strengths. Do you can you add to that? Well, I think that I think it is important to to look at what their interests are, interests are and what and build upon their strengths, like you're saying, and also you know, in going down those rabbit holes, or like if all of a sudden you're taking apart the dishwasher, your child shows this, you know, <laughs> keen interest in it, then you, you've all of a sudden opened a door you may not have opened before or wouldn't have opened on your own. And, and knowing that that's okay, that is, we want lifelong learners that know that they're kind of, well, maybe I want like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that I want my kids to know that they're in charge of their learning and that learning doesn't stop because the lesson is over. And so I think there's a unique opportunity in homeschooling to do that. So building on their strengths and their interests and really getting them involved in that conversation so they can start to be not only um, the student who is kind of just following the program, but also be the developer eventually of their own. That's beautiful. That's a good place to stop, I think. Awesome.